All right. Um, well, we were saying the book of Acts demonstrates that new churches are the normal and necessary result of biblical evangelism and mission. And we were mentioning how this word prostithemi is a technical word for adding to the church the way the Lord added. Uh, you find it again in Acts 15, verse 14. And all the more believers in the Lord were constantly added to their number. Same thing. Later in Acts 11.24, it says considerable numbers were added to the Lord. So to add to the church, to add to the Lord, it's a similar concept. And uh, one uh, particular uh, person who's written on this, this concept has said that um, the growth of the church in Luke's understanding occurs only when by repentance and faith a break is made with the past and reception in the church takes place. So biblical evangelism is always linked with new believers entering into the church. And of course, if there is not a local church, there needs to be one. Uh, Howard Snyder uh, says, had written, to do justice to the biblical understanding of evangelism, we must go a step further and say that the goal of evangelism is the formation of Christian community. It is making disciples and further forming these disciples into living cells of the body of Christ, new expressions of the community of God's people. And so throughout the book of Acts, this is what we see as normal. And so any kind of evangelistic organization, there's certainly uh, many good evangelistic organizations that only do evangelism, but they need to be partnering up with local churches that will help those believers become connected in communities uh, for the long term and discipleship. Church planting is also central to the Pauline understanding of and practice of mission. Now, this is interesting when we look at the Apostle Paul and the way that he worked. Um, let's take, for example, Romans chapter 15. Now, this is where Paul spells out most clearly his own understanding of his mission. And um, so we'll, we'll start at uh, verse 17, actually, in Romans chapter 15. Paul writes, Therefore I glory in Christ Jesus in my service to God. He, Christ, he just enjoys serving Christ. It's wonderful. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done by the power of signs and miracles, through the power of the Spirit. So, from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Rather, as it is written, those who are not told about him will see, and those who have not heard will understand. This is why I've often been hindered from coming to you. But... Now that there's no more place for me to work in these regions, and since I've been longing to see you for many years, I plan to do so when I go to Spain. So we already saw that Paul saw his calling as a pioneer to preach where Christ was not known. But what's interesting here is that he says that the work from Jerusalem to Illyricum is finished for him. He said, there's nothing left for me to do here. Now we have to think a minute about what that really means. If we look at this map of the Roman world, the Mediterranean area, we have Jerusalem way down here. You all know where Jerusalem is. Where is Illyricum? Illyricum is way over here. What would be uh, Bosnia, Serbia, Croatia. And he says, all the way from Jerusalem to Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel and I quote, <laughs> there's no more place for me to work in this region. <laughs> now, you probably hear this, you go, now, now Paul, uh, aren't you exaggerating a little? You know, I know you're a great missionary, but you really have nothing left to do in this huge part of the world. He wants to go to Spain. He says, I'm looking way out here. Rome, that's just the stopping point. I'm going way out here to Spain. That's where my goal is. In fact, one of the purposes of the book of Romans is to recruit the Roman church to be his supporters as a launching pad 
for his mission in Spain. Well, what could Pyle possibly mean when he says there's nothing left for me to do in this whole region of the world? Well, most Bible students and Bible scholars are of the opinion that Paul believes because he has left behind churches and that these churches are reproducing, there's no need for him as a pioneer to work there. So obviously, Paul had not even visited every city or village, much less preach the gospel, much less plant a church in every city or village. But he is working on the basis that the churches that he did establish will continue to evangelize those whole regions around them. So this is Paul's strategy. This is very important to get. Pioneer a new region, empower those churches, place leaders in those churches, train other missionaries and evangelists, and then leave them, and they will continue to reach the whole region. Now, did that really happen? Well, indeed, it actually did happen. Um, and we'll see some example of that, of church multiplication, um, in a moment. But this was Paul's plan. Church planning provides also a key integration point for ecclesiology and missiology. Now, sometimes we tend to think of ecclesiology as just sort of the doctrine of the church, and it somehow gets disconnected from the mission of God. And remember, we were saying before, the very identity of the church, the mission of the church, grows out of God's mission. And so the, the church reaching out, becoming an instrument of the kingdom, in alignment with God's mission, in planting kingdom communities, that is the integration of the mission of the church and ecclesiology. So some have taught mission as if, well, we just go and we make disciples, or we just go and we feed the hungry. Or some have taught ecclesiology as if, well, what is a church? One holy, Catholic, apostolic church. Mission and church don't come together. But here, in church planning, the mission of the church and the nature of the church come together. And so church planting, I believe, is very clearly essential to the fulfillment of biblical mission. It is in alignment with the Missio Dei and essential for creating kingdom communities. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.